So today's video is obviously a really tough one and I this is actually my second time filming it. The first time I had to scratch it, I cried through the whole thing. I'm gonna try to keep it together through this video. Anytime I share a super personal story on YouTube, I've been here for a long time. I've shared a lot of stuff over the years, but I always go through my mind like, should I post this but even though it's hard, it's emotional, it's a tough topic, but if I do, is it going to help someone out there? And absolutely no doubt in my mind, I feel like this video is going to help several people out there because miscarriages are obviously very common. One in four women are gonna go through one. So that was my main reason for posting this. I don't want anyone to think that me posting this is for attention or drama or sympathy or anything like that. It's truly not. I want to be able to help so many out there who are going through miscarriages to not feel alone. But also my experience here in Texas with some recent laws that have happened, I wanna be able to be a voice for people who are here and going through what I went through. It was an awful situation, very traumatic for me and and I wanna talk about it. I think it deserves attention. Before I tell my story, I need people to realize that I'm not trying to get into a debate of pro-life versus pro-choice. It's not what this video is about. I know both sides are very, very passionate. So please, I'm asking you not to get in the comments and start debating on that because that's not what this is about. I'm speaking on my experience of this current law in Texas that has passed, uh, how it affected me, a woman who went through a miscarriage for a baby that I very much wanted and was traumatized by how it was handled based off of these laws that are passed here. It was something I never thought I was gonna experience. I didn't know when I first moved to Texas that I was even gonna get pregnant here so it was just a lot to deal with all at one time for me personally, but I know I'm not alone in what I went through. So the other disclaimer I have, anyone living in Texas, please don't think that I'm bashing you or the state you come from. There's been so many lovely people, kind, giving. It is definitely true that Texas has that Southern charm and that Southern hospitality. So even though I know I'm gonna get emotional and probably a bit angry in this video. It is not aimed at anyone who lives here. Please understand that. So my story began when I found out that I was pregnant. I had to look up on my phone the date of it. It was on August 13th. I have my picture saved at the pregnancy test. I didn't share it publicly obviously because I like to wait until I feel like I'm in the safe zone for my pregnancy. As soon as I found out that I was pregnant, I called several OBs in the area. I live in Houston and was trying to get seen right away because I've had a past miscarriage. I know that I'm high risk based off of my weight and my age. I'm 41, I'll be 42 soon. So that alone puts me in a high risk category plus health issues that I've had. I called, no lie, 10 different OBs before I finally found someone that would take me at all. I was really shocked, honestly, that when I called all these OBs in the area, they would ask me some pre-screening questions. You know, what is your weight? What is your age? Have you had miscarriages? Blah, blah, blah. And I would automatically get turned down and say, we can't take you as a client. And I was like, okay, I understand I'm high risk. Maybe some doctors just don't specialize in that. So I kept calling you guys. I was calling for two days straight. And even the ones that were willing to take me, they wouldn't see me until I was at least eight or nine weeks pregnant. Remember that for when I tell you something later on. Almost every doctor I saw said they would not even give me an ultrasound until I'm eight or nine weeks. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, but I'm high risk. What if this is an ectopic pregnancy? What if there's something going on with my health? I'm hyperthyroid. I have other things that I have to be monitored right away to make sure that I have a successful pregnancy. That's my ultimate goal, that me and baby are safe. So I was frustrated at the beginning. I was starting to stress out. I called my husband, I was like, we just moved to Texas a few months ago. I'm like, I didn't have this experience in Washington when I had my daughter, Adelina. And so I was like, do I do we need to go back home? Do I need to rent a space there? Uh, I'm stressing out because I'm, I'm not even getting in to be seen. So finally on the 10th doctor I called, it was a high risk doctor downtown Houston that was willing to take me. So I get in for in a couple weeks for an ultrasound. That's as soon as they had. I At that point, I was seven weeks, five days pregnant. I, had, I went in, I had my ultrasound. Everything looked great. I have a picture of that. That's my little peanut right there. Um, it's a little peanut, but still everything looked good. I was measuring at seven weeks, five days. She couldn't for sure say she saw a heartbeat, but there was definitely fluttering. So she felt pretty confident it was a heartbeat, but she wanted me to come back in a couple weeks just to verify it and just check that everything was okay. Fast forward to two weeks later, I'm nine and a half, almost 10 weeks pregnant. I go in for my ultrasound. I'm super excited. My husband can't come in because of COVID. So I have my phone out ready to FaceTime him or video it so he could see. I'm laying there on the screen. She starts on the outer part of my stomach and she doesn't see anything. She's like, okay, you're not far along, so let's do the trend, you know, the internal one. I'm looking on the screen and it looks like this black empty tomb, just hollow. Sorry, I knew I was gonna cry. And the OB just got silent, it got really quiet, and I knew in my mind I was like, something's not right. And I could tell from the screen, I was like, 
I was like, something happened, didn't it? And she kept looking for a little bit and she was like, um, I think you have a blighted ovum. I don't see, um, I don't see the baby in the sack anymore. And I'm like, okay, what happened? I was here two weeks ago. There was a baby there that was fluttering. He's just gone, just disappeared. Like, how is that even possible? After a moment of me crying and putting my phone away, she said, I'm so sorry. I'll give you a moment just to be able to get through these emotions and such. And when I saw her again, my first question was, I don't know what to do from here because my previous miscarriage I had before I had my daughter, my body did not naturally mis miscarry. Really quickly, I'll tell you that story. I got pregnant in 2018. I was 39 years old. I was high risk back then as well. I was in Washington state. I Everything looked great for my ultrasounds leading up to the 12 week mark. And on the 10 week ultrasound I had, they didn't see a lot of growth, but there was still a heartbeat. And they wanted to keep an eye on me and the baby just because there wasn't as much growth as they'd like to see, but there but the baby was there, there was a heartbeat. I came back at 12 weeks, the baby was still there, but there was absolutely no growth from the last time I came in and the heartbeat was gone, the baby was just gone. And at that point in Washington, I was given a choice of what I wanted to do. Did I wanna wait it out and see what happened? Did I want to get medical intervention? And I said I wanted to wait, so I did. I waited a few days and that weekend on a Saturday, I was downtown with my husband, we were shopping, was leaving to go walk up to meet my husband and I got hit instantly with the most severe pain in my lower stomach and my back to the point where I was having a hard time walking. So I'm holding my stomach, I'm hobbling up the hill to find my husband. By the time I get to him, I'm barely able to walk. I'm crying because I know what's happening. I'm My body's miscarrying. We hobble over to the car, we head home. I'm calling the OB on the way asking what should I do? And they said, are you bleeding yet? I said, no, I don't think so. They said, head home, let us know if the pain gets worse or if you have severe bleeding, call us back and we'll let you know what to do. The night went on, I, my pain got even worse. I was hunched over it was the most awful pain and I knew something was seriously wrong I just internally knew like this does not feel right and at that point I still was not actually miscarrying so I knew that my body wasn't gonna pull through with it on its own so I called them back I was like I need to have medical intervention right away I'm in such severe pain so they scheduled me the very next morning for a DNC procedure I went to the hospital that next morning we went through the procedure they were super caring and giving and loving and were there not only for me physically but emotionally were asking if I was okay. So even though it was a traumatic experience and I was further along, I felt at peace with everything because I was able to mentally and emotionally move on and I knew I was in a safe environment in a hospital having this done because I did not want to get infection. I wanted to be able to try again later for a baby and I felt that was the safest option for me. So fast forward to now when I knew that I was had already lost the baby, I wanted to have a DNC because I wanted the same options to be able to be in a safe environment and feel like that everything was taken care of on its own and I would be able to try again for a baby but that option was not even on the table when I went to check out for my appointment the doctor had said because of the new law that's passed here I need you have to schedule another ultrasound to verify that this pregnancy is not valid before we can give you any sort of medical intervention and I stopped for a minute I was like Okay, it's obvious on the screen that this baby's gone. It's not like there's just not a heartbeat or anything. There's no baby inside the sack. I was like, I have to go through another ultrasound. I have to look at this again because of some law that was passed by some person in office who has never had been pregnant and will never have to go through that, but he's making laws for me and telling me that I have to somehow prove that this pregnancy is not viable before I can even get intervention. So I left the office just angry and frustrated. And I have to get in the car and tell my husband what's going on. I'm trying not to cry. My daughter's in the car and I want to be strong for her. But at the same time, I'm devastated. So I go home. And I start looking up all these places to get another ultrasound so that they could send the results back to my OB. I find a place, this is on Wednesday, I find a place that's wanting to get me in on Friday. So I go to this ultrasound place. It's super cute, it's very homey and positive. Pictures of babies and the nurse come, the technician comes out and she's very chipper and was like, all right, you get to see the baby today. And in my mind, I'm like, no, I don't. It's so freaking awkward because it's supposed to be this happy experience. And in my mind, I was like, I'm actually here because I'm required to. And I have to look at this empty screen again just to get medical intervention that I feel that I want and need. So we get to the back room and the technician doesn't know yet. She's like, do you know how far along you are? And all that. And I can't even answer. I just start bawling on the spot. And I'm embarrassed 
and frustrated and it's so awkward for the technician because she's just standing there in silence and when I'm finally able to speak I was like well I know I already lost the baby I'm here because I need a second ultrasound so that my OB can have a copy of it so after an awkward moment of silence she's like I'm so sorry she's like okay get on the table get undressed from the waist down this is the other part that adds another layer of I don't want to say violation, but it is. It may sound dramatic, but for these circumstances, it just had this weird factor to it. So because I wasn't far enough along and it is a blighted ovum, it needs to be a transvaginal ultrasound again. And you know that this is going to be done. It's not painful or anything, but it's already, it's already awkward to begin with. But when you know that you were there because a politician told you you had to be and you somehow needed to prove that your pregnancy wasn't viable, it feels like an extra layer of violation that you have this transvaginal ultrasound going on and you're just laying there having to go through it knowing that you didn't want to, but you had to. So as I'm laying there and she's doing the procedure, she doesn't even turn the screen because I know I don't want to see it, but I know it's happening. And she just says in a quiet voice, yes, it's the same results. It looks like a blighted ovum. She leaves, I get dressed, and I ask it how long it'll take to get the results to my OB. She's like, we'll be able to try to send it later this afternoon. That was on Friday. So the whole weekend, I'm just walking around like, is something gonna happen? Is my body gonna naturally miscarry? Am I gonna get an infection? How long do I have before I get an infection? And you're just walking around knowing that I'm carrying this like, invalid pregnancy. It's a very weird feeling of just waiting and wondering. So Monday rolls around, I don't hear anything from my OB, and I'm like, okay, is this, like, I don't really know what to do, so I just kind of waited it out, and, and I'm spending this time looking online, like, am I, how long do I have before I get an infection? I just, I want to make sure that I'm okay later on to try again. So Tuesday morning hits, I call the OB, I was like, do you guys have my results? I really want to get some intervention, I don't want to risk anything, I want to make sure that, m that my body and everything is okay. So the office says, I think we got the results, but you have to wait for the OB to look at them before you can get any intervention. So now it's Wednesday, it's a full week later, after I found out that my vet that my pregnancy wasn't viable and I don't know how long before that that the baby was already lost so at this point I'm desperate I'm calling them I was like I need something I need intervention please tell me what it is that I need to do the OB schedules a video call with me and says you can't have a DNC procedure but I'll give you the medication for you to be able to get through this miscarriage. I have no idea what any of that looks like. I've never taken the medication before. So Wednesday night, I'm doing research. I'm looking up a lot of questions on what is this gonna be like? How traumatic is this? I'm really scared at this point. And then I see a lot of horror stories in there and I'm trying not to freak out, but I just wanna know what to expect. Thursday morning comes, I get my prescription. I'm trying to prepare myself mentally and emotionally to take them and I just didn't feel it at peace for me. You know how your gut's speaking and just like, I just, I don't want to do this. I don't want to have this at home. I know some women out there feel more comfortable with that being in their own home environment. For me, it felt very scary. I called back my OB Thursday. I was like, I'm not taking these pills. Please, whatever it's going to take, I would rather have a DNC procedure so that mentally and emotionally I have that closure and I'm able to move on. And she said because of COVID cases and because it was a blighted oven that there probably wasn't going to be any hospital willing to do the procedure for me, which I understand it's not her fault, but I'm just I'm mad still at this point how this has played out. This has been well over a week after I found out and this whole time I'm just walking around like hoping I don't get an infection. So now it's Friday and I still haven't taken the medicine. I'm stressing out what to do. I was like, do I fly back to Washington, go to my old hospital, have this done? What do I do? And so, and I was maybe hoping that maybe my body would secretly miscarry and that I'd be able to deal with it naturally. So I let the weekend pass and it still didn't happen. So Monday I was calling every hospital, every clinic in the area, and I finally found a place that was willing to take me for a DNC I got in Tuesday morning. They asked beforehand, again, they wanted copies of the ultrasound because of the law. They needed proof from another person that, that my pregnancy wasn't viable. My OB, I called them multiple times on Monday afternoon, asked for them to send over the ultrasounds. It never came, they never sent them. So fortunately, I was able to get copies of the ultrasound from the second clinic I had them done before, and I was good to go, and I was able to have that DNC that Tuesday afternoon. Now this is the part that people, it's gonna be a little awkward to talk about, but it was at a clinic and not a hospital. So I was already a little bit nervous because I was like, you know, what happens if like I have a reaction to something or is there a medical team that's gonna help me? I'm just scared. Plus there's another layer of feeling like I did something wrong. There's protesters out front. There's people that have to get me out of the car and my husband drops me off to take me in so that I don't get harassed by people protesting. 
and people sitting outside saying, you don't have to do this, like I was there because I did something wrong. I was so angry because it, I felt throughout this whole process like I was at fault for something that I had no control over. And I didn't even have it in me. Like the feisty part of me wanted to just stop and scream. Like I had a miscarriage, the baby's already gone, but I didn't have it in me to even do that. So I just walked in the clinic and sat with a bunch of other women who were sitting there scared just like I was. So after it was all said and done, I went home and I was finally able to come to peace with the mental and emotional closure, even though obviously the pain is still there. But my whole reason in sharing the story, again, it's not for me to try to get sympathy or play a victim. It's just to show what it's really like to have a miscarriage here. And again, I'm not trying to get political. I'm not trying to get into a bait of pro-life versus pro-choice. I'm asking you to please respect that and not get into that argument. That's not what this is about. However, I get so angry that I was treated this way because of laws that were passed that by men who have never been pregnant and never will be but are telling me how I am supposed to get help and made to feel like I did something wrong or I should be ashamed for me wanting to get a procedure that I feel like is safe for me to be able to try again for a baby in the future. I'm frustrated, I'm angry, and I feel like the women here deserve better than that. And so that's why I'm posting this video because it doesn't matter what side of the fence that you want to sit on. Laws like this affect all women regardless of what situation you're in and it's not right. I shouldn't have to go get a freaking another ultrasound and sit through that awful experience looking at a screen and sitting in awkward silence while someone shoves a wand in my, in my sensitive area and tells me, hey, you lost your baby again. I shouldn't have to go through that twice. And I shouldn't have to beg to get some sort of medical intervention to make sure that I don't get an infection so I can still be here for my daughter that I do have. It's so fucked up. It's fucked up. And I don't know what it's gonna take to change that, but it's messed up that that law is how it is here. Women deserve better than that. So, I'm so sorry that I'm crying so much. I really was trying hard to keep it together. Cause I know this is an awkward video to watch and it sure as hell is awkward for me to post it, but it's important and it needs to be talked about. So anyways, with all of that being said, I hope anyone watching this who has gone through a miscarriage or maybe going through one right now, I hope you realize that you're not alone and that nothing that you did, it makes this your fault. It's just part of life and part of things that happen. It sucks and it's emotionally, mentally, and physically brutal. But I know that we're all strong enough to get through it. For anyone who hasn't gone through a miscarriage, I hope that you're able to listen to this with an open mind and just see how women here get affected by things that they shouldn't be. I can 100% say that my previous miscarriage I had in 2018 in Washington and the one I had now, this one by far is the most traumatic one ever and I was not even as far along as I was on my first miscarriage but because that was handled in such a sensitive way and I was able to choose how I wanted to get medical intervention for my miscarriage that I felt safe and at peace and I was able to emotionally move on a little bit more easily than this time around. I don't really know how to end this video to be honest you guys. Other than if you made it through this whole video, thank you, I appreciate it. And I'm just sending love to all the women out there, especially those who have gone through a miscarriage. I know your heart is grieving and I just want you to say that you're not alone.